you're out there. You're listening. You're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't see the future. I'm not here to tell you how this is going to end. I'm here to tell you how this is going to begin. I'm going to start this broadcast, and when I do, I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. A world without controls and boundaries. A world where anything is possible. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Tom. If I asked you to define the matrix, how would you do it? Do me a favor. Pause the video right now, and in the comments below, write what the matrix is to you. To me, the matrix is the metaphoric representation of the false reality created through propaganda. And if that definition is correct, then that propaganda comes from the political establishment, the mainstream media, Hollywood, popular culture as a whole, among other places. There's something happening in America right now. Something happening to the matrix. And I want to take some time to explain what it is because it's really positive and there's positive energy in the air. And I hope that you feel it and I hope that we, the people, could help push it forward by reaching out and uniting the country. We have to do it. Let's go back to 2016, the Hillary Clinton campaign. One of her slogans was, Love Trump's Hate. And the sentiment behind this was that Hillary Clinton, the left political establishment, the mainstream media, stood for unity, diversity, inclusivity, and acceptance of all different people. And that Donald Trump stood for just the opposite. He stood for hatred, racism, xenophobia. And this was a choice between good, Hillary Clinton and the left-wing political establishment in America, which includes the mainstream media, and evil Donald Trump, who was literally the second coming of Adolf Hitler. I hope by now we have enough empirical evidence to know how ridiculous that claim was. So, if you recall after one of President Trump's speeches, almost every mainstream media outlet in the country, following the lead of the Clinton campaign, wrote the next day that Trump's speech was dark. Trump has a dark outlook on America's future. And the idea was to cast Trump and his speech and his campaign outlook in a negative light. And the media does things like this to create that propagated false reality. So take immigration, for example. Trump sometimes is his own worst enemy. So he comes out and he's talking about border security. And he doesn't want Mexicans coming into the country and committing crimes. Now clearly, Trump elaborated on this. And he was talking about the drug cartels, which there is a major problem with violence coming from Mexican drug cartels into America. And he was talking about that violence spilling over to the border, leading to murder, violence on the streets, gun violence, and drug use throughout the country. But the mainstream media just played that one clip over and over again. And they used it to create a straw man. That Trump's immigration policies were based around xenophobia and hatred. And then they brought the KKK into it. And they said, you see... The KKK supports these policies, so in turn, everyone who supports Trump's immigration policies, including Trump, is doing so because they hate Mexicans, because they're xenophobic, because they're racist. Now, of course, that can be easily explained. People who are racist were going to support President Trump's immigration policies because they're tougher and in theory would result in less brown people coming into the country. But that doesn't mean that all people who support Donald Trump's immigration policy, including Donald Trump, are racist. In fact, the majority of people who support immigration reform do so because you can't simultaneously, at least economic, if you want economics to, 
economic sustainability, you can't simultaneously have open borders and a welfare state. So the, the media focuses on xenophobia and racism because they want people to focus on the least common denominator. They want people to dehumanize Trump, and they want his supporters to be dehumanized as well. Let me give you more examples. Let's go to Charlottesville after the election. Now, in Charlottesville, there were white supremacist KKK members, and there were communist Antifa members. And both sides showed up looking for blood, so to speak. In fact, if you watch the videos live that day, Antifa were the main protagonists. They showed up with bottles full of urine to throw, um, bottles full of concrete that they put in bags and they were throwing at people. They showed up with baseball bats and weapons with their masks on. They showed up to be provocative. The communists and the Nazis, two of the most violent ideologies in human history, which have both led to the deaths of untold numbers of human beings in just the last hundred years. I'm talking about Nazism in just four years led to the death of 20 million people. You want to blame World War II on them, then 60 million people. And communism in the 20th century alone led to the death of well, well north of 100 million people. Why the mainstream media and the universities don't teach that, well, that's a question for another day. I have certainly have done videos on that. So you have the Charlottesville situation. And afterward, Trump comes out and says the most reasonable thing you could possibly say. He says that both sides were wrong. That Nazi KKK members who are violent are wrong. And Antifa communist members are wrong. But the mainstream media doesn't report on it honestly. So they honestly, so they jump on the situation and they report at nauseum that Donald Trump has stood up for white supremacists. He has stood up for the KKK against the very peaceful anti-fascist. Now, for those of us who follow the grassroots media and see what the communist Antifa does at Berkeley, for example, routinely, you know that they are very far from peaceful. They are a domestic terrorist organization, which I would argue the media's ambivalence to them, as well as the political establishment's ambivalence to them, um, would, be, would mean they are actually the domestic terrorist arm of the political establishment and the mainstream media, which really, it's one and the same. For a third example, we have the Martin Luther King bust situation. On Inauguration Day, a member of the mainstream media tweeted out that Donald Trump, in one of his first acts as President of the United States, removed a bust of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now, this was quickly debunked, and the picture the member of the mainstream media showed didn't include the bust because someone was standing in front of it. But before it was debunked, it was parroted all over the mainstream media that Donald Trump had removed this bust. And of course, this served as confirmation bias for half the country, which had already been fallen victim to the matrix that had been told Donald Trump was an unalloyed racist for the last 12 months. Of course, he removed the bust. He stands for everything that is the opposite that Martin Luther King Jr. stood for. Now, if you follow Trump's career, of course, this was ridiculous. He was one of the first golf course owners in the country to open up his golf courses to everyone not just white people. He was receiving rewards from Jesse Jackson um, decades earlier for employing so many African Americans. And he's not a Nazi because Ivanka Trump, who is clearly his favorite person in the world, his daughter, the love of his life, is married to Jared Kushner, a Jew, which, mean, which means she is Jewish. So if he's a Nazi, he actually hates the person he clearly loves more than anyone else in the world. So you put this all together, and the media created a matrix. And they would also create the false reality that Hillary Clinton stood for unity and diversity.
But just use one example, right? Project Veritas released undercover videos of some of the most some of the most powerful people, some of the higher ups in the Democratic Party, admitting on undercover tape that the Democratic Party, in conjunction with the Hillary Clinton campaign, paid mentally ill people to show up at Trump rallies and incite violence, knowing that the leftist controlled mainstream media would propagate the matrix and wouldn't report to the country that the violence was actually started by those who were against Trump and that the Trump supporters were actually responding to the provocation of mentally ill people paid by the Clinton campaign there to attack Trump supporters. Now, if the mainstream media reported honestly on this one piece of information, it would have completely destroyed Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. You can't run as the candidate of unity, the candidate of diversity, when you get caught in undercover videos paying mentally ill people to incite violence at your political opponent's campaign rallies. But of course the mainstream media didn't do that. Now put the shoe on the other foot. Could you imagine what would have happened if an undercover videotape exposed Donald Trump's presidential campaign paying mentally ill people to incite violence at Hillary Clinton campaign rallies? The campaign would have ended that day because it's all you would have heard about. But it's not the message the mainstream media wanted to put out, so you didn't hear that when Hillary Clinton was caught red-handed with her hands in the cookie jar. And of course, they accused Trump of being the KKK member, but everyone knew that Hillary Clinton's mentor, Robert Byrd, was a member of the KKK, and that Hillary Clinton had much greater ties to that type of thing. But the media creates false realities. And to make it worse, rather than just dehumanize Trump with the objective of preventing people from actually hearing out his arguments, because why would you listen to the arguments, this is what they put out, why would you listen to the arguments of someone who is a complete racist, a complete xenophobe? It's the mental blockade they use to prevent people from finding out the truth. But to make it worse, they didn't just try to dehumanize Trump. They had to use the same tactics against Trump's supporters, or anyone who was pointing out the flaw in the mainstream media and the political left's political platform. Because if the Clinton supporters, if the true leftist were exposed to these arguments, they would realize the false reality created through the matrix. So anyone who pointed out these false realities also had to be dehumanized so that the leftists wouldn't even bother to hear the arguments. For example, take Milo Yiannopoulos. He has been labeled an alt-right KKK Nazi. Now, you might not agree with everything he says. I certainly don't. I am a classical liberal myself. But Milo is an openly gay Jewish man who spends his free time being fucked in the ass from behind by his big black gay husband. Are you sure he's a member of the KKK? Are you sure he's a Nazi? Or is that an argument used to dehumanize him so that people who are on the political left don't even bother to leave their mental prison, the matrix that has been created for them. Dave Rubin, he describes himself as a classical liberal. Me and him would debate many points, or I wouldn't even say debate. I think we would learn a lot from each other. We would have a very interesting conversation because we don't see eye to eye on all. But Dave Rubin, a self-prescribed classical liberal who was previously a progressive who had a rude awakening when he interviewed Larry Elder. If you haven't seen that, please YouTube 
Dave Rubin and Larry Elder because that was Dave Rubin's political awakening moment. But Dave Rubin has been described as alt-right, which comes with the connotation Nazi KKK. He is an openly gay man, again, who spends his time getting banged from behind by his big husband. I don't think he's KKK. I don't think he's a Nazi. Scott Adams supported Hillary Clinton for a large part of the election. Self-described as being left of Bernie. But when Kanye West tweeted out his video, something we'll get into in a second, the media instantly writes that he's alt-right. They want people to think he's a Nazi, he's hateful, he's racist, to dehumanize him so that people who are trapped in the mental prison in the Matrix don't listen to his argument. Candace Owens. Kanye West started his whole Twitter controversy, which again we'll get into in a second, when he tweeted out that Candace Owens is a free thinker. She has also been labeled alt-right. She is a black woman. I strongly doubt she's a member of the KKK. So all of this is done to dehumanize. And then the mainstream media and the political left puts out their talking points. That they are the party of unity. They are the party of diversity. But they're not referring to diversity of thought. They put out the talking points that they're the party of unity. That they're the party of diversity to keep people in that mental prison because now anyone that goes against them is against unity and diversity therefore they're racist therefore they can be dehumanized and the arguments won't be listened to these are the mental prisons this is the matrix and this is what Kanye West has been drawing attention to this week it started when he tweeted out Candace Owens is a free thinker. Now, of course, Candace Owens, mid-20s, African-American woman, outspoken conservative. Kanye would go on to tweet out that we have freedom of speech but not freedom of thought. That anyone who steps out of line is demonized. That anyone who talks to the people that have been demonized is themselves demonized. That we're in mental prisons that we're not free, that we're not permitted to be free thinkers. And of course, this pretty much broke the internet. Twitter went berserk. Notice how the mainstream media, notice how people on the political left responded to Kanye West. They almost all went directly to character assassination. Stephen Colbert, the mainstream media, echoed that Kanye West must be mentally ill for not standing up for the diversity and the unity that is the left. That Kanye West has been suckered by the alt-right. That he has aligned himself with people who are racist and xenophobic. What an interesting reaction from the mainstream media. Because if you were a journalist, what I would do, right, for anyone I was speaking to, rather than resort right to a character assassination, why not just ask him, hey, Kanye, how did you come to this conclusion? What changed in your understanding about the world? And maybe we'll have a debate about it. Maybe I'll tell you why I think that's incorrect. Maybe you agree. Maybe you won't agree. And we'll have open dialogue. But that's not what happened. Instead, the mainstream media resorts directly to character assassination. And interestingly, not only the media, but the people stuck in the mental prison, they respond with vitriol, with anger, with hatred, with demonization, not with diversity, not with unity. Because they've been trained, they've been locked in mental prison, that there's only one way of thinking, and that way of thinking is diversity and unity. But they can't comprehend in their minds diversity of thought, that there's some chance that they may have misinterpreted what is going on in the world. 
So the mainstream media, along with the people stuck in the very mental prison that Kanye West is now tweeting about, openly talking about, instantly resort to character assassination rather than openly have a dialogue about how Kanye West came to this conclusion. Take his conversation he had with John Legend, for example. John Legend didn't ask him how he came to his conclusion and engage him in open debate. He just said that you have a legacy and that if you align yourself with Trump, that's going to hurt your legacy. It's a way of saying, get in line, stay in line. And it's not that people like John Legend and your run-of-the-mill leftist, leftist are nefarious in their thought process. They are stuck in a mental prison. They can't comprehend the idea of diversity of thought. That it's possible that Kanye West realized that the left, which claims to be for diversity, is actually using diversity and unity as a method of people, keeping people in a controlled state of mind so that the political left could gain money and power. Kanye West is as big a threat to the Matrix as anyone ever could be. It's why any time a celebrity steps out of line, voices support for Trump, they are instantly attacked with vicious character assassinations led by the mainstream media. Shania Twain comes out last week and says, if she was an American, she would have supported Trump. And then a few days later, she issues an apology. How dare she voice her support? For Trump. Tim Allen had his top rated television show canceled after he went on Jimmy Kimmel and voiced his support, didn't even voice his support, insinuated that he might support President Trump. Anyone who steps out of line is instantly met with vicious character assassinations because the establishment understands that politics are downstream from culture. It's why our culture has gotten so politically, so politically correct and so bland. Everything is controlled, whether that's from the top in the hiring process or through peer pressure. And the peer pressure can be absolutely immense. Have you watched the late night talk show hosts? All they are are paid propagandists for the political establishment. Almost every mainstream television show relentlessly pushes leftist ideology politics within the context of their shows. Hollywood movies almost relentlessly push leftist ideology, collectivism. The political establishment understands that controlling the culture allows them to control the politics and maintain the matrix where anyone who steps out of line is dehumanized because it's the only way the matrix can pull together by preventing people who subscribe to the arguments made by the political left from listening to the arguments of anyone who might think differently. And I'm not talking about conservatives. I'm not a conservative myself. Just anyone who might think differently. Kanye West is a monumental threat to the matrix, the false reality propagated by the political establishment, the mainstream media, and popular culture. And they are going to do everything they can to character assassinate him and make him step back in line. And this is a critical time in American history. And I know it's a funny argument. But it is critical that anyone who is not stuck in the matrix, anyone who is a free thinker, anyone who is a libertarian, a classical liberal, a conservative, a Republican, an anarchist, an anarch capitalist, reach a hand out to Kanye West and show that they support him. And if he's putting things out there that aren't exactly in line with whatever you might believe, that's fine. Open up a dialogue and reach your hand out. Because Kanye West has 27 million Twitter followers. 
Kanye West is an absolute icon. He is a cultural icon of his generation. Every pair of young eyes in America is looking up to him, and we haven't had anyone with his clout step up with the courage that it takes for him to do what he's done. Because when you come from that world, stuck in that matrix, the idea of stepping outside of it means that you, in the eyes of everyone who you were previously aligned with, right, there is no freedom of thought. You are a racist. You are xenophobic. You are a Nazi. You are KKK. You are alt-right. You are Hitler. Think about the courage that this man has displayed and realize the opportunity because he has the opportunity to red pill an entire generation and not just an entire generation, entire generation of young people, but an entire generation of African Americans who are the greatest victims of this matrix because of America's history it is much easier for them to fall victim to the matrix that, oh, you see, this person is racist. This person's going to enslave you again. This is what this person wants to do. That's how anyone who's not a leftist is portrayed. So they are dehumanized, so these young people won't hear their arguments. But Kanye West provides an opportunity, and we would be foolish not to reach out to him, no matter what your political beliefs are. And Donald Trump and his administration, Make America Great Again, would be absolutely foolish not to reach out to Kanye West and let them know that we might not agree on everything, but we are more than open to hearing your views. I mean, just look at PewDiePie, right? He had the whole controversy where he was playing a video game and he was shooting Nazis and he threw up a Nazi salute as a joke because he was shooting Nazis. And the mainstream media, because they were in there, every white person's a Nazi phase, saw the opportunity. So what the mainstream media did was that week they ran a bunch of hit pieces on PewDiePie saying he's a Nazi, he's hateful, he's a racist. What they didn't calculate is that PewDiePie had an absolutely loyal following of 50 million young people who watched him every day for years. So they knew he wasn't a racist. So all the media did was wake up all of these young people who knew he wasn't a racist to the fact that the mainstream media attempts to brand people as racist KKK and Nazi who aren't racist KKK and Nazi. Kanye West provides that type of opportunity and we would be fools not to embrace him. He has the opportunity. He already has taken a metaphorical sledgehammer to the matrix and we need to spread the word we need to reach out to him he is in the phase that many of us have gone through i went through it myself i used to be a run-of-the-mill republican he is going through his awakening phase where you realize how the world really works and we need to be patient with him reach out to him i already have tweeted at him i've talked to him well i haven't talked to him but i've tweeted out the ideas of the principle of non-aggression volunteerism, natural law, and you should do the same because this is an opportunity to smash the matrix. There is a great awakening that has been happening. I have made the argument that if you study your history, the Gutenberg Press was made, I believe, in the 1300s. And by the 1500s, 200 years later, the world had been given the gift of the written word on a mass scale that the world had never had before. And within 200 years, you had the Italian Renaissance. And within a few hundred years, you had the French Enlightenment thinkers and John Locke and the idea of natural law. And a couple of hundred years, again, a couple of hundred years after that, which is just a glimpse in human history, you had Thomas Paine, who wrote the book Common Sense in the Americas. And that book was read by hundreds of thousands of people of the only 1.2 million people in America. And that sprung the American Revolution, which led to the Constitution, which led to the Bill of Rights, which led to freedom of speech and freedoms the world had never seen before. 
That's what the written word did. Well, the internet was made. The internet was created and made widely available to the public only about three decades ago now. And within three decades, we have seen a mass awakening on a scale of which the world had never seen. It's happening so fast. It's happening all around us. And the energy is shifting. You have to feel it. Because Kanye West is the next step. First is the Great Awakening. Then is the pushback by the establishment. And then there's influential people waking up themselves who could bridge the gap and create true unity, true diversity, diversity of thought. Because me and Kanye West probably wouldn't agree on much, but we would agree on having great conversations. Don't you think Kanye West and myself would have a great conversation? I think we could learn a lot from each other. Just like I don't agree with everything anarchist capitalists think. I don't agree with everything conservatives think. I don't agree with everything libertarians think. But I respect them all. I follow them because I respect diversity of thought and I understand its importance in a human awakening. There are amazing things happening in the world right now. I know this was a complex argument, but the message behind it is help people break from the matrix because you have been dehumanized. And Kanye West has provided, he has reached out, and we as the awake community need to reach back to him and see the opportunity in this because there is a human awakening. Be a part of it. Be the uniters, the true champions of diversity. Let me know what you think about this argument. I know there was a lot in it. I'd love to read your comments. Tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where I'm right. If you support what I'm doing, you want to get this message out, share this link. You want to support me financially. I really appreciate it. As little as $1 monthly. What would hurt you, but it makes a big difference to me. Go to www.patreon.com slash FFR News. I also upload these videos on BitChute because I don't know how long it will be until YouTube completely kicks me off their platform. I've already noticed tremendous censorship. They People click the bell and then YouTube unsubscribe that, or unclicks the bell so they don't get notifications. I see my videos where they have 100 views and I check back the next day and then it has 50 views. So YouTube is lowering the view counts. With um, that's, an, that's psychological warfare to try to demoralize me so I don't make the videos anymore. This is the type of things they do. I'm actually going to make a video on that shortly. Um, so please follow me on BitChute. I'm Tom FFR News. Um, Tom FFR News on Twitter. Tom Anderson on Gab. Uh, Tom Anderson on Facebook. Tom FFR News on Facebook. Tom FFR News on Minds. Tom Anderson on Steemit. Thank you so much. Long live liberty. Reach out to Kanye. We are the people of unity. We are the people of diversity. Thanks, guys.